Brothers and sisters, good morning, welcome, and happy new year as we gather together this morning on Epiphany Sunday. I'd like to welcome all those who have chosen to join us in person and those that join our live feed. It is great to be together wherever we are because we are truly one spirit in God's world, in God's love. As we begin our time together this morning, just some things to get us on the same page as we enter into this new week. I do want to share that our live feed this morning is made possible through a donation that is celebrating God's wonder in the new year and given by Walt and Rhonda Emmons in celebration of their 27th uh, wedding anniversary. And so I thank them so much for uh, that gift. And I would encourage any and all throughout this next year that if you would like to be a part of um, making sure that our live feed continues, just call the uh, office or stop by the office and just make your donation. Uh, there's no set donation, just make a donation in honor or in memory of anyone that you choose. I do want to share uh, what's happening this uh, coming week. I do want to sh thank all of you that did um, support the Doug's Fish Fry yesterday and the Twigs candy sale. There is candy that is available uh, at the Welcome Center if you would like to um, uh, Help yourself to some candy. It's only donation only. There's not prices to it. Uh, the Twigs Youth Group did make uh, candy holders for you um, for upcoming Valentine's Day, that if you put the candy bar in there and a little message and such things. Uh, so please help yourself to those and also the candy bars back there also if you would like to do that. There is a mobile food distribution tomorrow. Um, we need all hands on deck for this. We will pack inside and bring the um, food out. As of right now, it looks like there's uh, well over 200 uh, families that we will be helping tomorrow. Tomorrow evening is our Monday night uh, community dinner. Uh, last Monday, we served over 225 meals. So um, any way that you can help or support or pray for uh, both of those ministries tomorrow, please do so. The prayer group will be meeting on Tuesday, and I will be launching my book study um, on Wednesday at 7 p.m. If you would like to be a part of that book study, please see me. Well, no, do this. Don't see me and tell me. Uh, send me an email so I can send the link right to you. Uh, right now, we have over a dozen people that will be attending via Zoom, and if you'd like to be a part of that, by all means, uh, feel free to do so. We will be looking at the book Soul Keeping by John Ortman. So I would love to have as many people as possible be a part of that. And also, just a reminder that on January 15th, that's a Friday, we will be having an upcoming Brooks Barbecue. Um, if you can help with that, pack the meals, uh, please see Dave or call the office, and that would be, uh, that would be wonderful if you could do that. Lots of ways in which uh, oh, I also want to share about the meeting night. Um, please check with your um, committee chair as to uh, where they're meeting, how they're meeting, and what medium they are meeting in. I do know the council will meet at 7 o'clock that evening uh, via Zoom. So check with your um, chair people as to how they will be meeting. Lots of ways to be uh, involved also to support this ministry and to invest in it. Uh, there's information, uh, as always, on the uh, Welcome Center about our endwellumcshop.com site, uh, or you can see anyone on the missions team, uh, especially Diet Minerly or Ken Anderson, if you'd like to be a part of that. Also, you can give your gifts uh, via text 24-7. You can uh, mail your contributions in, or you can go to our online uh, website and just hit the uh, giving tab. For those that are here this morning, again, we do not take a formal offering. There are offering boxes located throughout the sanctuary at any time. If you uh, feel God giving you uh, the direction to give, by all means, feel free to do so. One request as we move forward into 2021, and this comes from your finance team, um, we are so blessed to have as many people as we do give electronically. Um, that is such a blessing. Um, I don't know exactly where we are. I'm thinking probably 60, 65 percent of the congregation is giving that way, and it's a wonderful blessing. We would just ask that if you did not fill out an investment card, a, a, a pledge card, and you are giving by electronic draft, and if you haven't um, let the office know that you're going to continue that, please do. 
Um, we don't want to guess. We don't want to assume. Um, so if you could do that and just let the office know via email or just give them a call and just say, hey, this is, uh, this is my intention this next year for those that are giving electronically and did not fill out a card, that would be a, a wonderful blessing. I welcome you all to Epiphany Sunday. The Sunday, the wise men, the magi journey to see the child Jesus. There is so much rich theology and understanding in these words that our brother Sean will bring to us this morning where the wise men go searching into the unknown. Boy, if that doesn't wrap it all up for us as we enter into the unknown of 2021. But we do so led by the truth and the light of Emmanuel knowing that God is with us every step of the way. So let's prepare for this celebration, this time of worship, as we prepare our hearts and listen to our prelude. God had been silent for 400 years. We knew because we were listening in a sense. My job, my job is to listen. You wouldn't call a person that talks a lot a wise man, would you? No, you'd call them many, many, many things, but a wise man wouldn't be one of them. My position is to look for signs everywhere. A star, for example. I can look at a star and watch it and wait and see what the star is trying to tell us. I read one time of a star that would announce a new king. And then one day, there it was, a beacon in the night, a star like, unlike any other star I'd ever seen before. And so I followed it. Several of us, we followed this star. It was bizarre. 
the star would lead, it would move, and we would follow. Our journey took two years, and it led us to Judea. And then the star stopped. It just stopped. Shining down over this small cottage, our journey ended not at a palace for a king, but at a home for a peasant. This was it. I mean, we gathered our thoughts, we gathered our gifts, we did all that we could do to contain our emotion. And behind those doors was a new king. A king that could command the stars in the sky and yet chose to dwell among us. A king that spoke and the word became flesh. God was finished being silent. That night we knelt we bowed down before this baby boy and each one of us laid gifts at his feet. We had to, we couldn't help it. 400 years of silence broken by the cries of the Son of God. Friends, I invite you, wherever you may be this morning, to break the silence. If you're able, would you please stand and let's sing together, Hark the Herald, Angels Sing. Please be seated, friends. I share now our joys and concerns 
and ask that you continue to pray for the brothers and sisters that we lift up verbally and those that rest in our hearts. This is a call for each of us to reach out in grace to one another and to be a part of one another's lives. I would ask prayers for the following folks. I did send most of these out via email this week, but I just wanted to catch up on a few of these if I could. I would ask that we keep our brother Frank Green in prayer. Uh, Frank and uh, Jeannie are um, members of our church that uh, would come to the 1030 worship. Frank had a stroke uh, and is now uh, in Binghamton General. Um, he also um, is combating uh, something before he can um, begin his rehab. So please keep Frank and uh, Jeannie in, in prayer if you would. Also prayers for our sister Dorothy Engstrom. Uh, Dorothy um, is struggling with COVID-19. She is in grave condition at this time. And we just ask prayers for the Engstrom family and for our sister Dorothy. I would ask prayers for Joseph Vasquez, who is the brother uh, of James and uh, our sister Sally Vasquez. Uh, we surround that family in prayer. And also our sister Haley Ritter. Uh, Haley is a college student um, who has been with us for many years, uh, who was really struggling with COVID during this time also. So please keep her in prayer. I also ask prayers for the family of Mary Jane Gregory. Our sister Mary Jane passed to glory a few days ago. I would ask prayers for her family. I will be um, meeting with them following worship this morning. And as soon as I um, find out what the arrangements may be, I will certainly make sure that I share that with the rest of her church family. That was so, so very important to her. So please keep the Gregory family in prayer if you would. I would also ask that those that are gathered here this morning, we will be celebrating the sacrament of Holy Communion, invite those that are joining us via our live stream to uh, share in that time together by securing bread and juice and have that handy. But uh, there may be some uh, cups of bread and juice uh, left over and anyone here this morning who would like to take uh, the extra to family and friends uh, those that might be blessed by it, please feel free to do so uh, as you leave this morning. But in this morning, in this moment, in the dawn of a brand new day and a new year, would you please join your spirit with mine and with one another in the holy privilege of prayer. Let us pray. Wonderful God, above all things, we gather here and wherever we might be to thank you, to worship you, to feel your presence in our lives. In this time that is filled with both uncertainty and certainty, we rest in your presence. We rest in your strength and power. We rest in the assurance of Emmanuel that no matter what lies ahead of us in this new year, that you are with us. You stand ready to sustain us in the midst of our opportunities, in the tribulations, in the midst of our joys and most certainly in our sorrows. And so, Lord, we take this moment, this time to ponder, this time to see your light, not merely lit as a candle, but lit within us, to know that your presence nourishes our souls that your wisdom guides our thoughts. That all that you came to be and become resides within us. 
We gather to worship our God who is the creator of everything, but to know that the very breath of that God is within us. And for that, we just give you thanks. If this time in our lives has taught us anything, it's that separation, the inability to touch, to gather. At times, strips away who we were created to be. And so we need to rest in your presence more than ever, to be connected to that breath as we do our very best to connect with one another, to those who are struggling, those who are ill, those who just feel isolated from their loved ones in this world. And so, wonderful God, we just rest in your presence, and we pray that through this time, this new year, fraught with challenges, no doubt, that we will continue to be your children, your church, your disciples. We pray all of this in the glorious name of Emmanuel. Amen. We continue this year, unfortunately, not with children's church or children's time with the kids on the stairs, but in a different way, in a powerful way, in a way that I encourage all of you to spread, to share with family, with friends, with colleagues, with neighbors, to share this unique opportunity to stay connected as we continue in 2021 to celebrate wonder. And we do so this morning as Lynn brings the message of the Magi. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Let's Connect and Celebrate Wonder. Welcome to Epiphany. Epiphany is the revelation made to the Magi that the Christ child had been born. The Magi or wise men were essential mystics, ancient astrologers, and political advisors. They would study the stars and analyze dreams and omens, and then offer their advice to kings and political leaders. In addition to this mystical advisory role, they played an important role in the coronation of a newborn king. The Magi were polytheistic, meaning they believed in and worshiped more than one God and did not follow the God of Abraham. However, scholars believe that they may have known of the prophet Isaiah's words, for unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders. And when the star of Bethlehem appeared, God revealed to them that the long-awaited Messiah had been born. In this session, children will learn that God includes and reveals himself to all people, including unbelievers and outsiders, and children can celebrate that they too play an important role in the Christmas story. As we begin the season of Epiphany and embark on a new year, let's follow the light. This revelation and journey with the Magi to honor the baby Jesus with our most valuable gift, our hearts, and share the good news of the Savior's birth to all people. It's time for Kids Connect. Hi everyone, let's see what's in our Wonder Box this week. Magi, or wise men, as we sometimes call them, were very smart. They were kings from an ancient country called Persia. They would study the stars and then explain what they meant. When Jesus was born, a new star appeared in the sky. Some believe that God had told the Magi a king had been born, the baby Jesus. They didn't have maps or GPS systems like we have today to find this new king, so they packed up and rode on camels following this special star to Bethlehem, only traveling at night. Did you know that the same stars that the Magi followed are still seen today? And what's even more amazing is the same stars that you see in the sky are the same stars that people who live all over the world see. God put a special star in the sky and wanted everyone to see it. And he invites everyone, no matter who you are or where you live, to follow it 
and be a part of his Christmas story. The Magi faithfully followed this light, this special star. And when they found the baby Jesus in Bethlehem, they praised and worshiped him by honoring him with gifts. These gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh were considered valuable and fit for a king. I wonder, what valuable gifts can you give to Jesus? Sometimes when we think of gifts, we only think about the gifts we give at Christmas or the gift you give to someone on their birthday. But God wants you to give Jesus the best gift of all. The most valuable gift you can give is your heart to follow his light and share God's love with others. As you begin a brand new year, let the stars remind you that God sent Jesus, the light of the world for everyone. And let the Magi remind you to faithfully follow his light and honor Jesus with your most valuable gift, your heart. Uh, have a great week. Love and miss you all. Friends, if you are able, let's stand and sing together the hymn, We Three Kings.
Friends, please be seated. As we share together in our gospel reading, it will be shared with you in two different languages this morning. The scripture we are reading today comes from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 12. ในเศร้าเมื่อนี้เราเกือบบทที่สองโหราจารย์จากทิศตะวันออกเมื่อพระเยซูประสูติในบ้านเบตเลเฮมแขวงยูดายในสมัยของกษัตริย์เฮโร
Good morning. I hope you have a blessed New Year's and holiday. So thank you so much for this opportunity for me to share some perspective on the, uh, the book of Matthew chapter 2. We just have read uh, together this morning. And thank you, Pastor Mark, for allowing me to share this morning. Will you pray with me? Gracious and loving God, we thank you for today, for opportunity to come to your house to worship and to study and to share for each other. May you bless our scripture with about to look together this morning. May you guide us and help us. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. The book of Matthew chapter 2 verses 1 to 12, I entitled it called The Journey of Lifetime. Before I get to this story, I want to share uh, some of the, my personal story as a childhood. When I was 14 of age, I was have opportunity to go visit my grandmother in my homeland up north. As, as a child memory, I recall at my hometown, I was heading to visit her up north. As a child, I remember that that was uh, far away from the city, the town that I visit. The road was not good, all muddy. Uh, the pothole was everywhere. So when I arrived to her village, her house was no running water, uh, no electric city. Everything was in countryside. But yet, when we met her, it was very, very lovely and have not seen her for a long time. I was yearning to see her. And last year, she just turned to 102 years old and had been the, with the Lord. So it's very good to have her. It's good memory that with my grandmother. But as I said, remember that night when we have dinner with her, we have no electricity as I share with you. So the way we're using the light and the lamp, we're using the fat uh, animal, collecting from the pig or anything that we cook, and we make a lamb of it. So it was as a, not much, nothing fancy in the household, but you know, we have family, we have all that. It's very special to us. And after the dinner that night, we, we step outside, have some bonfire with her and and boy, I was outside so solid black. So black, I, I put the palm of my hand, I hardly see my finger, but so, so black over there, solid black. As we build a bonfire, gathering the bonfire, we talk. I have opportunity to look up at the sky. Boy, my, 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 it's a wonder to see. It's a solid black, and look up, you see hundreds and thousands of sky and light and the star everywhere. It's amazing how the God of our universe can create it. And my grandmother would tell me different story about the star, a different shape. I would ask her, Grandma, what's the star is all about? So we describe to you, tell the story, make up a wonderful thing that good child memory can wonder. So when I heard about this, I was, my mind go wild. Marvelous, I was thinking about the universe that God made. It's amazing to me, and it's all for me, to hear different kinds of shape of star and the light, bright light, the grandma have taught us in my child memory. This morning, the Gospel of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12, told us, and you heard last story about, minute here, about Magi, traditionally called wise men. But when they look up the sky that night, suddenly they have seen the unique bright light I'm sure they have seen so many things in the sky before. That's what the unique the study about the star and the bright light. But that night, the unique star have captivated them attention. I am sure that their mind wondering why amazing and curious, just like me as well. I'm not sure they sleep at night or not at night, but they're eager to, to know more about the bright light, the mystic bright light that they see. I want to see the curious. So what is it? Why does that appear to them, different shape, that we had not seen it before? The gospel tell us that who are the magi or wise men you have heard all about. So I know you have heard story today and you have heard this hundred times. But I want to add a little bit more on the story, where they come from, who are they? According to the gospel of Matthew chapter 2, verses 1, told us, the wise men is from the east and can be from the Babylon or from the, the ancient Persia. 
But in the Greek word, it's called them mangoes, or my language I just read to you is called dalasa. So it does mean, according to the research I found, this is what particularly the wise men and magi there, or dalasa, that we found them. They are the scholar. They are high priest. They have very high education. They're holding very important position in their homeland. But more than that, they have holding the great well. They are super rich, super rich that time. And I'm very familiar with that because in my country, we have king, we have the monarchy. And the wise men will be the most important as a council that to the king. And we are respect them as a, a second person of the king in our homeland. So very important, very healthy people, very super rich. But interesting what I found after I have done the research, I found, wow, they have everything that all the human here can desire to have. But what is the most significant and important that compelled them to travel 100, 100 miles from foreign land and difficult terrain on the back camera? And Mrs. Len just shared with us that they have no modern GPS, no modern car as we have it. But what is it that compelled them to travel from difficult places but also are telling us that not only three wise men, but that many have found a star and eager to search it and compel them. I just share with you, they have so much thing. They have money, they have wealth, they have fame, everything. But what is it that compel them? Look with me together this morning. According to my research, I have found, even though they have everything in their life that the human can desire for, but one thing that is missing, I found the scripture told us their life was empty. Their life was incomplete. Their life was unsatisfied, unfulfilled, and they're yearning for something, a longing, something more in their life from that brighter star. So that is what motivates them to pursue what they are looking for. Today, I want to share you pers uh, two perspectives that I found may support my reflection this morning. Uh, there are two pastors named Ra Ed and Rob. Uh, last name from both of them are pastors and Christian educators uh, from Woodland United Methodist Church at Woodland, Texas. This is both of them have wrote a book called Wonderful Christmas. This is what they said in the story, very interesting for me, I have found. This is what they said, they said, we like to think that we have come so far as a human race. And in many ways we have, but the most important truth about us as a human being has no change. Wealth, power, position of privilege, and physical pressure are not enough to satisfy and deepest longing of our hearts. Most of us think that we will make for more, we feel that something is missing, that we need something more for our life to be right. But not all of us recognize what this need truly is. In fact, many people who yearn for something more of pressure and more of everything that have already left them unsatisfied and unfulfilled. As a result, their life journey becomes nothing, nothing but distraction, keeping them from finding more they are longing for. The second person I want to support, this, the theme here is called, and you may know her, uh, her name Mother Teresa, is a champion of the poor, that he have dedicated her life to help the people in India. This is what she said about, about us when the uh, American journey have interviewed her about America. She said, America is a blessed country, nation on earth, with modern technology, leading education, science, stable government, and blessed with a great wealth that produce multi-millionaire around the world. But they are empty, people are unsatisfied, unfulfilled, and lonely. Jesus Christ 
have told us before from the book of John chapter 10. This is what he said. The thief come only to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come that they may have satisfying abundantly and fullness of life. Think about that. I come so people can be satisfied abundantly and fullness of life. And then he continued, he said, internal peace I leave with you. My internal peace I leave with you. Do not give as the world gives. Do not let your heart be troubled and do not be afraid. For God, or for I am so love you and me that I gave the only son that whosoever believe in me or in him shall not perish but have internal life. So as I read this scripture, I have found there are many abundantly fulfilling, satisfying, eternal peace and love from our Lord Jesus Christ are willing and wishes to give to us. When we saw the, when the wise men had waited and had to participate and took the action that Christ had guided them to the Bethlehem, they were encountered Christ's child and they gave the gift, as we know, gold, incense, myrrh, and their life. That's why we the beginning, there are many, many wise men have searching, and they all drop out, only three, because the gift, that's why we found three wise men. But more than that, have searched, because their life is empty, the lonely, they found. But only three have found Christ, and have given their life to Christ. See, Jesus Christ has fulfilled their loneliness, Jesus Christ has filled the emptiness, the unsatisfied, and, and their unfulfilling life. And he here tells only Lord Jesus Christ, try, can give it to them. Well, I'm telling you, this with the end, he said, wow, they are taking the life journey with them. Today, before I left, I want to end my reflection this, the story of Mr. and Mrs. Smith. So if you are uh, Mr. Smith out there, I apologize. I have found this, uh, the story uh, unique uh, to leave my reflection. And I have found that author was unknown. This is how Mr. Smith's uh, story ended. Mr. Mr. Smith lived in a small town called Smithfield. It is far away from town as they live the countryside. And one per month, they will take a trip to buy food, done a grocery shopping, and Mr. Smith liked to shop antique store and clothing store. And her husband, Mr. Smith, liked to shop at a hardware and a sporting goods store. After they all done this, their routine, then they were heading home. See, as I shared with you, they live in countryside, only one road that they travel, or going home. And the road there was driving home what that night, it can, heading home, was construction going on. You know how familiar with construction, and as the only road they travel home. So the big size got detour. Well, Mr. Smith decided not to follow the detour, so go different ways. So as they go different way, he had driving written for a while, and his wife noted that her husband is lost. Without respecting to him, you know, uh, respect to him not to say something. So he, she was patiently quiet, continued driving, waiting. So after waiting for a while, she cannot stand it. She finally said, honey, can you just stop and ask somebody? And then her husband turned to her and said, honey, I got it. They've been traveling this road a lifetime. And besides, who's the captain here? So with respect to her husband, she's silent and quiet. So as he drove for a while, Mr. Smith, dripping, dripping, so when then focus on one car, one car in front is a red car. It had bumper sticker all over the red car. So he decided to follow this car because one of the bumper sticker that, that he found is called, I love Smithfield. So he thought that car is know something about his hometown. So he decided to focus on the red car and follow it. So when they let the red car make a left and right turn, he will follow it. Then all of a sudden, this red car came to full stop 
at the railroad track waiting for a train to pass by. As I shared with you, the sticker was everywhere on the bumper. So Mr. Smith was scanning all over and found big sign in there that he found beside all the sticker. He said, do not follow me. I am lost too. <laughs> Question that may I ask this morning for you is, and I, what are you longing for and yearning for for coming year 2021? And what you and I are waiting and anticipate and preparing for what for coming year? What kind of star and sigh that you and I yearning and longing, willing to follow this coming year? So may the child of Christ, may the writing star reflect on us and guide us as we move in direction. So don't follow me, I'm lost too, following Christ. Thank you, Sean. It began many weeks ago with the Advent wreath, where we lit the candles of hope and peace, joy and love. It continued as we lit the candle of Jesus Christ and celebrated the child lying in a manger. It has brought us to this time, the season we call Epiphany. I like to call it the season of ahas, of understanding, that yearning within all of us. Because, friends, I think it would be a whole lot easier, simpler, to just merely keep Jesus as a child, celebrate his birth. But we meet his birth this morning in preparation for his death and the offering of new life. These things that we do are not exclusive of one another. They build on one another. And so this child that we celebrated by singing Silent Night now comes together with his disciples, those that he loved, as they gathered for a meal and at the end of that meal, he took, as we are told, simple bread. He gave thanks to God for it, broke it, and told them, This is my body, broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And then he took the cup. He lifted the cup and gave thanks to God and told them that this was his blood. That this was the cup of aha, of the new covenant, the new way, the new life that we have. And he told them, as he tells us this morning, to take and drink as often as you gather together. And so we pray in this moment that the very presence of Jesus will be found and recognized in the bread that we break and the cup that we share, oh, very differently than we have before, and I get that. But in this different way, there is the way, the truth, and the light. The way that fills our emptiness that yearning that Sean was speaking about, that we're all searching for. As it was found on that holy night, it is found in this holy time as we share in the bread and the blood of Jesus Christ. Let us pray. Holy One, in these moments that unfold wherever we are, whether we are here in this time, in this sanctuary, or we are in our own places, we thank you for this gift you give to us. This gift of bread and cup. The gift of knowing that the star has led us to this moment. Of understanding. Of realization. Of transformation. Of epiphany. So may this not just be another time to share in communion. 
But may this be a profound time of recognizing what we do. Be with us now as we share together wherever we might be. In your name we pray. Amen. And so I invite all of us, in our own way, in our own time, to share in this gift, this gift that is given to us of Emmanuel, that as Christ is found in that light, Christ is found in what we do now. Please, take this moment, your moment, and feel God's presence as we share communion. Since last March, I've had countless conversations with colleagues about how we're working our way through this pandemic. And we've had countless conversations about communion. How are you doing it? And there's probably as many different ways of sharing Holy Communion as there are pastors who can invent those ways. And in the midst of all of those conversations, My takeaway is this. How we celebrate Holy Communion in these difficult times is nowhere near as important as why we share in Holy Communion during this time. Friends, let's be that light. Let's be that song that Sean was sharing as we join our voices together to sing our final hymn. There's a song in the air. Let's join together.
family and brother and sister, as we're looking for the new year, may you congratulate all of you have committed your life to Christ and continue in your faith journey with him. But if some of you are still hesitating and don't know, this is the time to wait and anticipate. Be like wise men. Take their life journey with them. It will be the best life journey that they have found. So do not wait. Anticipate and cultivate the star. So may your new year be bright. May your new year be encouraged. Have you found Christ in your heart and lead hope and peace and love of Christ be with you. Go in peace and may God bless you. Amen. Thank you.